Welcome to Frequency Matters, the RFM Microwave Update. I'm Pat Hindle and I'm here with my co-host Gary LaRude. In this episode, we're going to cover our October Passive and Control Components themed issue. And so the cover story takes a look at some of the new entrants into the saw bar filter market, which is a growing market for the mobile communications. And we take a look at three companies, Acoustis with their single crystal bar filter approach, take a look at Resonant with their infinite synthesized network design approach, and finally OnScale with their cloud-enabled simulation platform. So these are three new players and see how they do in the market. It'd be very interesting to check that out. Yeah, that's been a real growth area in terms of the filter technology. What other technical features did we have? So related to the mobile, we have an article from Corvo on the new 5G front ends for mobile systems. Obviously, 5G brings additional frequency bands above 3 gigahertz, between 3 and 6 gigahertz. And so Corvo looks at the architecture of the phone and how it's changing and some of the challenges that that that, um, provides to component suppliers. So there are more bands, there are more antennas. Some of the bands have to work together in terms of carrier aggregation. So there are linearity requirements so you don't get spurs in the bands that you're trying to use. So it's an interesting problem and Corvo does a nice job of, of giving an overview. We also have an article from uh, Synergy and Drexel University. They teamed up to talk about optoelectronic oscillators, which is an interesting twist. And those can provide lower phase noise. Yeah, we saw that at IMS. It has both close in and far out low phase noise. Right. And then we have two articles that were approved by our editorial review board. One is a low pass filter L band done in microstrip. The differentiating thing about this is it has very good harmonic suppression. And then a really interesting article is a new FET design that avoids pinch off. And this is done by actually segmenting the gate to create sort of a uniform depletion region across the channel. And this is very interesting. The argument is it provides better efficiency and output power. And it's a theoretical paper. We're hoping to get some actual measured data to confirm what's been uh, proposed here. Yeah, it's a long time since we had a new FET structure, so yeah. it'd be interesting. Yeah, exactly. So those are our technical features, an interesting issue as always. And for product features, we had Keysight's new Infinium UXR series 110 gigahertz oscilloscopes and these are the first to achieve more than 40 gigahertz of bandwidth without frequency interleaving and they reported several other firsts four full bandwidth channels with up to 110 gigahertz as low as 210 microvolts RMS noise at 10 millivolts per division 25 femtoseconds of RMS of intrinsic jitter at 1 microsecond per division less than 10 femtoseconds RMS of interchannel intrinsic jitter and up to 6.5 eight effective bits. So wow. This is the Ferrari of oscilloscopes for sure. Yeah. Definitely. And we also had PSEMI with their 50 gigahertz digital step attenuator. So this is a 6-bit 50-ohm DSA with 31.5 dB of attenuation in 0.5 and 1 dB steps. And this adds to their other 40 to 50 gigahertz components that they're doing for 5G millimeter wave applications. Right. In recent years, they've really been kind of pushing into millimeter wave. Yes. What do we have for tech briefs? So we have four tech briefs. You talked about 110 gigahertz. We are seeing a lot of uh, products and instruments that are now designed to cover that. That band. We have some uh, components from Anritsu that are uh, intended to be coaxial interfaces that go up to 110 gigahertz. These include a power divider and a power splitter, a directional coupler, and some attenuators so that you can make measurements actually in a coax form factor. You don't have to convert to waveguide. Then we have a single chip synthesizer from analog devices. This has an integrated VCO. It's a fractional N architecture and it covers from 57 megahertz up to about 14 and a half a little bit higher gigahertz and it has a phase noise of minus 114 dBc per hertz at 100 kilohertz offset. IMST has announced a what they call a virtual model inspector for their Empire 3D EM simulator. This is kind of an AR or virtual reality tool and I actually got to demo it at IMS in Philadelphia where you put on the goggles and you can actually look at the layers of the uh, printed circuit board and you can actually check and make sure all the connections are where they're supposed to be and there's not something funny going on and it interfaces directly with the model in the solver. And then our final product from Markey Microwave is the first triple balanced mimic mixer. This is a first and uh, quite an interesting product. It has both a RFLO frequency response from 5 to 30 gigahertz and an IF from 2 to 20 gigahertz. So very broadband, good for EW and other, other applications that uh, require very high performance. Yeah, I think we had some uh, really achieving products in this issue more yeah. than usual. Yeah, definitely. So turning to the news on the 5G front, uh, Keysight reported that they're collaborating with Nokia 
Nokia, and they're verifying their field measurement tests for 5G network on a live test system, and they're using their field measurement solutions from Keysight. And Keysight also uh, extended their collaboration with Blue Test, mm. and they're supplying 5G emulation solutions to go with their reverberation chambers, and this is for OTA testing at sub-6 gigahertz 5G new radio. Interesting. How about you for news? So news-wise, uh, of course, the new iPhones are out. Uh, the uh, iPhone 10s and the 10s Mac and uh, iFixit has done a teardown of those and those show in terms of the chips that you can identify Broadcom or Avago as we used to know them one a mid high band uh, PA duplexer in the phone Murata has a 4x4 MIMO duplexer Skyworks has a number of devices including some PA switches and uh, the GPS LNA maybe most significantly Intel now is the uh, incumbent for the transceiver and modem as opposed to Qualcomm yes it's been a struggle between those two right fighting back and forth and then one other thing to note the FCC is supposed to vote later this month on an auction for the three and a half gigahertz CBRS band so citizen broadband radio service they've been going back and forth on how they're going to do the auction but they've at least the proposal is they'll award these on a county basis for a period of 10 years and if you have the license for 10 years you can renew it some of the wireless internet service providers are uh, complaining that this favors the large mobile operators who are looking obviously for 5G spectrum as opposed to these smaller operators who are really trying to provide wireless fixed access service say in rural areas. Right. So we'll see how that auction turns out. So as far as events go, uh, many of us returned from European Microwave Week in Madrid. It was record setting for a delegate count and exhibition space. So that's three years in a row that European Microwave yeah. Week has grown. So they're doing quite well. I wasn't able to attend, so you had to do double duty. So uh, what were your impressions? Well, we missed you, first of all. Uh, Madrid is a beautiful city. I'd never been there before, and it's a great city to, uh, to walk around, of course, with a lot of history. In terms of the conference itself, I was impressed that it, it was so upbeat. Of of course, 5G is rolling out, so there's a lot of uh, buzz, but a lot of business now coming out of 5G. And then the defense market as well is very strong, uh, also in Europe as well as the U.S. So I think everybody who was there has an optimistic outlook for the industry for the next few years. It certainly looks that way. I think that's one thing that sets European Microwave Week apart, is that they do have a significant defense component with the URAG conference and the defense forum right. that we participate in. Right. Yeah, there were a couple of papers from Leonardo, for example, as well as Rodian Schwartz and Corvo in a, the Defense, Security, and Space Forum. And this year's focus was on UAVs, not only how they're being deployed, but now how you defend against them, particularly as they can be threats in uh, civilian areas. Yeah, it's a hot topic. Yeah. Exactly. We have our EDICon show coming up. This will probably be the last time we'll be able to talk about it. Right. And so we encourage you, when you see this, uh, you have a short period of time to get registered. And we hope to see you at the Santa Clara Convention Center for two days of EDICon. And of course, I think we'll probably do a recap of the show. So we'll have some additional information in the next Frequency Matters. So anything else? That wraps it up. So we want to thank you for watching. We also want to thank our sponsor, Maycom, for making this program possible. The next time you're looking for components, please consider Maycom. Check them out. They're your partner from RF to light. Until next time.